Member for Light. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, today I would just wish to uh, bring to the House's attention uh, of uh, a few weeks ago of the Gawler, Gawler, annual Gawler Show. Now, the Gawler Show is the biggest rural show outside of, or biggest rural, rural show, uh, and the biggest show outside of this, um, the Adelaide Royal Show. It's held over two days, and this, this year they had about 35,000 people attend over the two days, which is a huge number uh, of people attending. So I must congratulate. Uh, Claire Forger, the president of the Gawler, Gawler Show Society Committee, and also the, all the volunteers and judges who made the event such a uh, success, including the various service clubs who help out in some way, either at the gates or providing parking services, a whole range of activities where they, where they do uh, support the event, as does the council, the Gawler Council also. Uh, Mr Speaker, that uh, the attendance was probably uh, boosted by, by fact, two, two factors. One is that the, it was just the first post-COVID show to be held. Uh, no show was held in, 2000 and, uh, in, nine, in 2020. Uh, 21 is a modified show which actually capped numbers, which made it a much smaller and much more expensive event to hold. Uh, and also the weather, the weather was actually ideal for the show. Uh, very pleasant weather, which was actually very, uh, which made it really easy for families to come out and come to the show. Well, my understanding is that to about 17,000 uh, people came on Sunday, the 18,000 on a Sunday. Uh, Sunday. Sunday, a bit more popular for the families. Uh, and, well, perhaps a lot of parents still work on, on a Saturday. And so the mum and dad and the, and the kids came out on a Sunday. It, uh, it is the Gawler show um, obviously attracts a lot of people from Gawler, but I would say that it attracts a lot of people from northern suburbs of Adelaide and also from greater South Australia, probably in equal numbers. And it does that because the Gawler show is a great alternative to the Royal show for, for, for families. In other words, it does cost less than going to the Royal show, but it's also more accessible. In other words, the cost to get there isn't as much and also the cost to get in isn't as much as well. But it also is not as such as... Uh, not as big as the Royal Adelaide Show and therefore more manageable, particularly for, for, for families with really young children where the, our Royal Show is much too big for that. As I said, the last normal show, for a better word, was held in 2019. And also the, the show society also this year um, in, in upgraded its new ticketing system where you can actually pre-purchase tickets. And one of the things about pre-purchasing tickets is that you don't queue at the gate to get in, and that made it much easier for people to come in, and tickets were scanned. And other, apparently, about 25% of the tickets were actually purchased online before the event itself, which made it much easier for families to get in through the gates because of less queues. Whole range of activities at the Gawler Show, from wood chopping, medieval reenactments, pony rides, kids' circus. The, the agricultural learning centre is very popular, uh, where they have a lot of a range of smaller animals, and also there are a number of people who actually explain or what the animals are, what they do, and the produce, etc. So that's a very important educational um, outcome. The, the, the shows are becoming more, more important in terms of education because a number of in, number, increasing number of students and kids, as was mentioned earlier today, are not aware where a lot of the things come from. In other words, milk, you know, a whole range of products. They, Unfortunately, they think they come from cartons in, in, in the supermarkets, but you know, so there's a much more important educational role, and certainly the Gawler Show does promote the educational component, which is really good. The Sideshow Alley was popular again amongst the youngsters. Uh, the rides are really busy. Um, they also had a, a village green in the show to have a seating area for families where they can actually eat, drink, etc., and just watch some of the activities, various demonstrations, a number of free activities. Uh, Saturday night was the return of the fireworks. Uh, which is, uh, which is um, I think it's sponsored, uh, I'm, I'm going to get this wrong now, I know the major sponsor of the show, one of the major sponsors of the show is, is Taylor and Forgy. Uh, Kittle Motors actually provide a car for the raffle to raise funds for the, for the show, so it's a really important community event. There are over 3,000 entries for various competitions around animals, cooking, floristry, textile, art, etc. Uh, the show was actually officially opened by Sophie Thompson, uh, who's a well-known gardening expert on, on ABC, I think, from memory. Uh, congratulations to the Royal Ambassador James Krieg, who's, a, who's actually got a demonstration dairy farm at Kangaroo Flat, also to the young Royal Ambassador Mackenzie Wilson. And, Mr Speaker, you cannot underestimate the importance of, of country shows. They're part of Australian culture. Uh, they help communicate 
a uh, whole range of things to city-based uh, people. Uh, it's a leading event in most rural communities, promotes innovations, and for many of us, it has a lot of childhood memories. Question before the chair is at the House. Notes grievances seconded. Question, those of the opinion say aye. Against, no. The ayes have it. Ayes have it.